What year is it? Star Wars Battlefront is back! This is where the fun begins. I really can't believe I'm saying this, and I really thought the day would never come that we would get the Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection. The return of Star Wars Battlefront and Battlefront 2, the old classic games to modern consoles. But this isn't just a re-release or a remaster. There's more to this than you might think. I'm going to share with you a bunch of stuff you might not realize about the re-release. And also, if you have any questions about the Battlefront Classic Collection, please leave them in the comments below because I'll likely make a video answering as many of them as possible, even if it has to be hundreds. There are too many of them. Also, I know I'm late to this news. I was away on holiday. I was in Thailand. It was lovely. And if you want to see some of what I got up to, come follow me on Instagram. There's some highlights over there. Hey everyone, it's Andrew. So I'm sure if you've clicked this video and you're watching, you're probably a fan of Star Wars Battlefront and played the original Star Wars Battlefronts way back in the day, or perhaps even more recently. Star Wars Battlefront 2 was my childhood game. I played more of it than I think any other game and possibly still have more hours in that game than any other game ever. The amount of time spent in instant action, just playing against the bots over and over again across all the different maps was a huge part of my childhood. And I'm so glad that that experience is returning once again, but online and in such a bigger capacity. Look at the size of that thing. So first of all, I'm going to go over the obvious stuff, when you can play this, how you can play this, and then I'll get to some of the more exciting and exclusive features you might not know are in this game. On March 14th, the Battlefront Classic Collection will release on all platforms, including Nintendo Switch, PS5, PS4, Xbox Series, Xbox One, and PC. This is a new game, so if you already own the old Battlefront games on Steam, for example, then you will have to purchase this once again for, I think, around $35, or in Australia here, I think it's around $50, but I believe on certain platforms there is a bonus or a discount for already owning the previous editions. I'm pretty sure on Steam you can actually get a discount if you already own the old Battlefront 1 or 2 or both. But this is an entirely new release, combining both old games into one new edition, so you'll have to repurchase it. But I think there's actually a lot of value to be had in the purchase, because not only are you getting both Star Wars Battlefront 1 and too, but there's also a bunch of new features they've added to both games, which you probably have never played before. First of all, the Battlefront Classic Collection has restored online play for 64 players. So unless you've played Star Wars Battlefront 1 or 2 on PC when they restored the servers for those games a few years back, then you've likely never even played Star Wars Battlefront online. I grew up playing Battlefront 2 on PS2 and like I said, played just against bots in instant action. So I've never actually had the full experience of playing this game online on a console console with 63 other players. The game is also going to be upscaled. I've seen that the download size for this is going to be something around 50 gigabytes, whereas the classic Battlefront 2 2005 on Steam was only like 4.3 gig. So clearly there's a lot of graphical upscaling going on here. The trailer honestly looks graphically impressive for a game that was released all the way back in 2005 initially. The game is nearly 20 years old. Star Wars Battlefront 1 is 20 years old. What? and they're re-releasing both of these as a 50 gigabyte game. That to me says it's going to look a lot better than it ever has, but at the same time still might not look as good as it does on PC. We'll have to wait and see about that one. PC Master Race. Oh, it's beautiful. Now, before I get to all the new content that's being added to this, there is one area of concern I have for this game, and that is the lack of cross-platform play. Especially considering the 64-player lobbies, it's not necessarily going to be easy for such an old game, even though it's getting a re-release to continuously fill 64 player lobbies for the years to come. But crossplay would be the way of fixing that. At the moment there has been no announced crossplay and it looks like it won't be coming to the game, but there is cross-gen play. Meaning for example if you own the game on PS5 you can play with players on PS4, if you own the game on Xbox Series you can play with players on Xbox One. I feel like most people are probably going to be playing this on PlayStation, it just seems like where Battlefront is at. But I'm also honestly a bit disappointed cross play isn't a thing. That said, I'm just glad we're getting this thing, and hopefully the online servers stay populated for many years to come. We're going to take care of that, aren't we guys? I'm doing my part! Especially considering all the new content we're getting for this game. Some stuff you've probably never played before. If you were really into the Battlefront games as a child like I was, then you might know that there was certain content that was only released to the Xbox version. And unfortunately for me, Xbox players got my favorite hero, Kit Fisto, in the game with his own unique abilities. Well, Kit Fisto and Asajj Ventress, who were only previously available on Xbox, are now coming to this version of the game. You're 
goddamn right. As the Battlefront Classic Collection is going to include all bonus content for both titles. Not only that, Star Wars Battlefront 1 is going to get the Jabba's Palace map, which was previously never playable, and Battlefront 2 is getting a bunch of bonus maps that were only playable in Battlefront 1, including Bespin Cloud City, Renvar Harbor, Renvar Citadel, and Yavin 4 Arena. I actually never played Star Wars Battlefront 1 way back in the day. I only played it more recent years since doing YouTube and have since gone back to play those maps, but have never played them in Battlefront 2. So it's going to be so good to have all of these maps in a map rotation in full lobbies just playing through. It's going to be wild when this thing releases, man. I can't wait. Can you believe they've done this? Honestly, this is the most surprising thing Disney have decided to do, I think, in a long time. And it's great that they're keeping Battlefront alive, even if Star Wars Battlefront 2 27 EA Star Wars Battlefront 2 is slowly dwindling. This shows that there is still interest in the Star Wars Battlefront franchise. People still love Star Wars Battlefront. And I've seen nothing but a massive positive reception to the announcement of the Battlefront Classic Collection. Another new addition to the Battlefront Classic Collection that was never included in the original Battlefront 2 is the expansion of Hero Assault. Previously, this was only playable on the Moss Eisley Tatooine map. This is basically heroes versus heroes, heroes versus villains, an assault mode where you can fight as any of the heroes in the game and face off against all of them in one crazy battle. That is coming to every single ground map, including the Death Star, Kashyyyk, Kamino, Naboo, among others. One thing I'm really looking forward to about the re-release is the ability in the old Star Wars Battlefront games to have multiple people in one vehicle. This is something you could never do in EA's Star Wars Battlefront games. And I'm so glad that for me and for so many players playing this online for the first time, we will get to experience what it's like to play in a vehicle with your friends and with other teammates. To go grab a tank, have one guy driving, have one guy in the turret, and absolutely have the time of your life. And for those of you who might have never played Star Wars Battlefront 1 or 2's campaigns, well, the good news is that this release also comes with those. The original Star Wars Battlefront campaign is here, and then Tamura Morrison's performance in the 501st Journals, the Battlefront 2 campaign, where you lead the 501st Legion from their time as clone troopers into the transition of stormtroopers, is going to be part of the game. What I remember about the rise of the Empire is, is how quiet it was. Along with Galactic Conquest, if you were a fan of that mode, which how can you not be? That was one of the most requested features for EA Star Wars Battlefront 2. It never made it to the game. It's the mode where you go and basically take control of the galaxy. You take down a star system, you do the space battle, then you go to the ground battle, and then you move to the next sector. Hours of fun, coming back to the game, coming back to consoles, coming back to every platform in 4K in what's hopefully gonna be the best iteration of this game ever. Bringing Star Wars Battlefront back to life. Please don't tell me I'm dreaming. It's all real. It's true. Also, it's so good to hear Tamora Morrison's voice back in the trailer. Your simulation days are over, Trooper. What an absolute legend. He delivered such a performance for this game. So iconic as the Clone Troopers. And he's once again, just as relevant as ever. Like I said, if you have any questions about the Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection, please leave them in the comments. That can be anything to do with the cross-platform, how that's going to work, what features the game is going to include, what it might not include, single player, multiplayer, whatever you can think of. Ask him below. I'll I'll try and answer them very soon. I'm hoping to make a bunch of videos about the Battlefront re-release, so if you're not already, please subscribe. And if you want to see what Battlefront 2 would look like if it was completely overhauled into a LEGO Star Wars game, then watch this video here, where I installed over 50 mods to create that reality. And thanks for watching this. My name's Andrew. I'll catch you soon.